found a place in Bali. It does. Big capacity bikes. And I was getting a bit worried because there's a group of Australians that came over and they were eyeing up the exact bike that I've just, I've just reserved for the next two days. It is a, a competitor for the British stuff for the BMW R9T. It's a bike that I've wanted to test out for so long. I can't actually believe I'm testing it here in Bali. Can you guess which one it is? It's not one of the ones Monica's got her eye on. Kawasaki Z. What do you think, color. Monica? It's really nice. Kawasaki Z900 RS. I'll do a full review probably in the next video, but this is the bike I've come to pick up. First impressions, I mean, it is. It's a big beast. You may not believe anyone can be this stupid, but out of the past two days, I've had to take cash out each of those two days. And each of those two days, I've managed to leave my debit card in the cash machine, walking off happily about 100 meters down the road. And each time I've heard an Australian voice <laughs> screaming from down the road, running towards me. Both times an Australian has gone into the cash point after me, seen that my card is physically still in the machine, so they could actually withdraw cash. It's not hanging out, it's in the machine. Taken my card out, looked for me, found me, and both times given my card back. The Aussie are the finest people. Honestly, without them, I would now have zero bank cards because that would have been all two of my bank cards gone. I don't know how to thank them enough. Monica obviously just can't believe it. Like, I, I left one yesterday and then I came out today of a cash point. I was off to meet Monica and Monica just sees an Australian running towards me. <laughs> she could not believe the stupidity yeah. that in two days I've done it twice. I was hoping there would be a Classic 500 and Classic 300 here, but I think they've got about four different shots, so they can also get a really beautiful blue Classic 500 that I may take. And I've also seen, they've got this, which is the Kawasaki W175, in essence, the tiny engine version of the big one I've got there. But this is the standard version of the one that we took to the beach, and it looks infinitely more comfortable and I probably actually prefer it. Good looking thing standard. Monica, have you got a preference Vespa wise? Oh, I love them all. They've got a good selection the cool here. One in the corner is my to give you an idea, I think I saw it. I'm sure Vespas were about 35 a day. I think this is about, oh sorry, Z900 in Bali, 82 pounds a day or so. So that's not far off European levels, but that's because the taxes are so high to buy that in the first place. Every time that I usually pick up a bike here, I, I give the cash, there's no issue at all, I just jump on the bike ride off. Here, I'll be honest, there's still no paperwork at all to take it. I actually had to say, can I get a receipt at least? And I said, look, we'll WhatsApp it to you. So no paperwork willingly given, but apart from that, they did do a full video tour of the bike and they asked to actually photograph me next to the bike. So they're noticeably more stringent with this because it's, it's so valuable compared to anything else here. Mm -hmm. Monica, are you ready? Yes, I am. A big bike in Bali. This should Sh be interesting. Shall we do a walk around before we go? Okay, we'll do, should we do one? Mm -hmm. Let's do a little walk around, okay. I won't go into too much detail because I'll give it a ride and then do a full review next video, but it's, it's in essence Kawasaki's answer to the Triumph Speed Twin 1200, to the BMW R9T, all of the European stuff. This is one of the big boys within the, the sporty end of the spectrum for the retro 
the retro segment of the market and this is one of the front runners this is always a bike on people's lips as the retro of choice and there aren't many japanese retros in the high capacity cc sector that are really competitive that look this good oh i can't wait mm. this has evaded me for about two years this bike and the it days looks amazing. it I, does I really doesn't like it? it let me just show you before we head off god it's i tell you what's intimidating <laughs> after having tiny bikes wait Wow, mm -hmm. mm, substantial. I can't wait, I can't wait. We're going to probably a bit today and then tomorrow, get away from all of the built up areas, go to some beautiful open countryside, some winding roads and try and make the most of this because this is a bike. Oh, you need some open roads for this. I'll just do a quick start up. <laughs> I won't go into too much detail on the bike just because I want to save most of my impressions for after I've done a long ride on it. But interesting to note, 20, I believe it's a 2018 model. It's probably been most of its life, if not all, on the island of Bali. It's only done 5,000 kilometers since new. So that averages, I mean, about a thousand kilometers a year, something like that. So 600 miles a year or so even though it's fairly kitted out for a little bit of touring it's got the rear rack on it it's also got a small monica you like that a small cup holder so you can have your drinks and stuff on the side which i noticed but 500 600 miles a year on average incredible isn't it mm -hmm. feels good very very good to uh, to be on a big capacity bike you almost start forgetting what it's like that limitless power whenever you want it even if you're not using it all the time it feels good to have it when the original version of this kawasaki came out the kawasaki z1 in 1972 kawasaki gave it a code name and they called it the new york steak and the reason they called it the new york steak is because in the usa if you wanted the finest premium meal that would be a new york steak so Kawasaki codenamed it that because they wanted to make the very best motorcycle on the market. It came out in 1972 originally, and although it wasn't the bike that killed off the British biking industry, that was probably, I believe it's the, the Honda CB750. This bike came out a year before BSA finally went bankrupt. And this really was the signal of the new dawn because Kawasaki were originally thinking of coming out with a 750cc bike just like Honda came out with with a CB750 and that really did kill off the British biking industry but Kawasaki had a last minute change of heart and instead of bringing out a 750 they went the whole hog and brought out a 900cc bike so they pushed on the game to the next level and the British bikes in general they had absolutely no way of coping with this Japanese onslaught and the predecessor to this the Z1 1972 that was 
a gigantically influential key bike of its day. Really a game-changing bike. Right, we'll wrap it up there. I'm going to drop Monica off, then heading into the countryside to enjoy the Kawasaki. Apologies if this is a slightly short video, but I want to keep all of my thoughts until I've had a really nice couple of rides on this. So, thanks so much for coming along. I'll see you all in the next one, back on the Kawasaki.